So today we are making a skirt with no pattern at all. And we're gonna be making this skirt on my Adi machine. I just bought this Adi machine and I'm loving it. You know what I'm loving it for? Because it counts rows on a panel mode. Which is awesome. So I start on uh, on the I work on the tube mode, but making a panel. And so I start on the first needle, needle number one, and then I go, and then when I come back, it counts again. So I have a row counter for my panels, which is awesome. So the skirt we are making is this one. Look how stretchy it is. And I'm using the fixation yarn again. And the reason why is because I have a box of it. So I have a box of fixation yarn. Because I used to use this yarn for swimwear. It's a really good yarn for swimwear. And if you look at all my patterns for bikinis down below on the videos, uh, I have a playlist with only bikinis. And um, so you can choose one for the summer. They're really cool. So, but today we're making a skirt. I didn't have a, I actually had a pattern for a skirt and I'm gonna quickly show here on the video that I made when I was living in Hawaii eight, eight years ago, I think. Uh, I was living in Hawaii and that's where I started making patterns. It was actually more than that. It was around 10 years ago, I think. Time goes, time flies. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I had that pattern and I had a look on the size and how many stitches and that, but the pattern changes a bit on these machines because these machines are like, I think they are 5.5 to 6 millimeters hooks, uh, needles if you compare with the knitting needles. And so you always have to put less stitches because the gauge is always bigger since your needles are bigger. Because normally with this yarn here, and if you look, most of the yarns, if they are lightweight, you're going to use like smaller needles. You're going to use like 4.5, 4 millimeters needles. And so you have, you get a smaller gauge. Okay. So I bought as well this. This is really cool. Like, uh, because what happens is when you place this in front of your pattern, it, uh, it, it gets easier to count stitches and rows. So if you guys don't have it, just buy one for you. And this is also four by four inches and helps a lot to see the gauge, okay? So we're gonna be using a skirt, like just any skirt you have at home so you can calculate the number of stitches you're gonna need since we are not using a pattern and I'm gonna show you as well how to do that. Okay, so um, let's get started. Let's get started with this pattern and I'm gonna show you how to use this yarn on this machine. Okay, if you are using any other yarn, just you need to have this to calculate the gauge because it just makes it easier, okay? So to calculate the gauge, what I did was I put this gauge uh, plastic thing on top of it and then you count the number of rows and the number of stitches, okay? And then I put here, uh, for 4 inches I have 46 rows and 18 stitches. So now what you gotta do is grab your skirt and measure it. This is 18, 18 inches. I'm gonna make kind of 16 because uh, this, material, this material I'm using stretches. So I'm making 16, I don't want that too big. So that's 16 and to make it easier to calculate with the gauge as well. So 16 by 12, perfect size, okay. So 16 divided by four is four. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have four times 18 stitches because I'm using the number of stitches because we are calculating this way, okay? 
So because I have two panels, it's going to be uh, the numbers of stitches by two. So I'm going to have 18 times two because uh, this is by two because two panels. So I'm going to multiply this 18 stitches times two, which it is 35, 36. Because of these machines, you have to work with odd numbers. You can put 36 in this situation, okay? And now the number of rows is gonna be the length. The length we calculated 12, I made it a little shorter, but um, again, 12 by four uh, equals three times. So three times 26 rows in this case. So I made a hundred here. I made a little longer because I had an idea from my, and as you can see, yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's a little longer. So you can add a few more here. So instead of three times, make four times here. But so this, so you have an idea of, of how to calculate from your clothing to the um, to the piece you are making to the pattern you are making so this would be around 80 rows in this case but I added one more inch so yeah so to calculate one inch in this situation you would have 26 rows divided by 4 and that would be the number of uh, rows to each inch. So like in, uh, let's say you have instead of 12, you have 13. So you have three times the number of rows plus one inch. Okay, and this would be the number of rows for one inch, 26 by four, because we have four here, okay. Or you can use your your little, let me see if they say in inch. So this one inch, two, three, and four. Yeah, you can count here, or you can use, you can use a ruler if you want, and just count the number of rows you have in one inch, in case you have inches more or less there. So for this uh, skirt, I'm going to start with the waist yarn, just because it's easier to see the stitches later on. And I'm going to cast on 31 stitches. I'm working on the tubular mode, but I'm making a panel as always. It has to be an odd number for these machines because then we have the last stitch in front of the peg. And now I'm working, I'm gonna work four rows of this and then I'm going to put my fixation yarn that I'm using for, um, to make the rest of the rows. So put your row counter back to zero. So it counts the number of rows that you're gonna make and then put that yarn in. Here, just before the first peg. Then I'm gonna start working with my yarn. So if you are working, I always say with your uh, add machine just make sure that first peg grabs the yarn because um, it, it tends to drop with this yarn just because it's stretching okay so just apply a bit of tension on the beginning here with your finger and then make the work okay if you are using central machine same thing just uh, don't use the tension holder of the central and use your fingers instead, okay, just like this. 
and let the yarn run through your fingers naturally okay so i'm making with the same 31 stitches i'm going to be making 100 rows for my skirt okay 100 rows for a size medium and um, four of these panels okay and now um, I have already three panels here because this skirt's going to be four panels just so uh, I can make a pattern that fits everyone and not just you know a pattern that fits a um, small size so I placed all the panels inside the machine so it's easier and now I'm going to start, make sure they're both facing um, the same side. So when you remove, you remove all the sides facing the same way, just because we are going to make a ribbing on the top. And then from the bottom, it's going to take me a while because I'm making from the bottom of the peg to the top. So now I have all four pieces of my skirt here. I'm making four pieces because I'm making a medium and it needs more stitches than what the machine has. And so here is the... Um, it's a mess down on the bottom here. So I left the last bit of yarn that I had on the machine from the last panel. And I'm going to start straight here, just joining them all together. So, two by two ribbing, okay? So, these two I'm gonna count as two pearls. And then I'm going to knit two. Knit two. And pearl two. I'm going to be repeating this around and um, when I get here I simply just join the next one you can even make a knot on these tails here just to secure them before you make the stitch and then we're gonna go around with two knits and two pearls now I forgot to say something place a marker where you started Otherwise, you won't remember because that's where you have to start casting off the stitches um, on the last row. So I decided I'm going to make, I think, this ribbing like double size so I can fold it in and then make it double on the top. I don't know, I just think it's going to look better though. So I made here 16, 15 rows of this. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this like this and I'm going to put this um, elastic that I bought at the shop, 1.2, uh, 12 millimeters elastic, 1.2 centimeters. I'm going to fold this and put the elastic inside just because I think this is going to be um, a little too loose for my waist. So I'm just going to finish it off a few stitches here so you know how I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm going to knit them all. Okay, and so I'm going to knit from this one right from where I started. We have the marker. And then I'm going to grab the one just before and pull it on top of it. Now here you can make this just normal, like um, not too tight, not too loose, okay? And then, so I'll be niching them all. So all you do is pull that second loop through the top of the first loop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam all these with the mattress stitch. So I'm going to seam all the sides 
This is the same stitch I use for the pants as well. Uh, is the mattress stitch. I'm gonna put a little drawing quickly so you guys can see. But it's a very easy stitch to make. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's a bit annoying actually, but it works. So I'm gonna repeat this in all the pieces. And then after that, we're gonna finish it off. Hopefully it's not gonna be too big for me. So now that I seamed you know, all the pieces together, this is a front, I made a little better. I skipped stitches here and it doesn't look as good as, well, that's the front one. So what happens is on the front one, I left a little bit left here because I'm gonna make this opening on the front. So I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to start from. So I'm gonna put all these stitches, these stitches here, I'm going to put the hook, the needle here, the needle through that first loop of each stitch. You know which, uh, is, um, what the stitches are because you can see here on the loop on the top there. So I'm just gonna put them all in the hook so I can remove this waste yarn. So here I'm really happy with the size, like as you can see it's almost the same size of my other skirt that I have underneath it. And because it stretches is the perfect size. I'm gonna make double this on the ribbing. So I have I think 12 rows, I'm gonna make 12 more so I can fold inside and then add the elastic here. I like elastic because even though the ribbing holds a bit and this is elastic, I think it just it's a better finishing. And because this is a skirt that I actually wanna wear, I I'm going to put make the ribbing bigger. So I'm gonna show you guys, I don't know, quickly how to open stitches and put them back in the circular needle, okay? And then we are going to be finishing it off with crochet here as well. And I decided because I have most of my, like I have these tops here that they are like blue and that and they're different. And like I, I have this one here that I like to wear with that skirt and it's white. So I'm making it white. Mm -hmm. Put the stitches back on uh, your circular needle just in case you want it, the length to be uh, bigger than what you did before. You're gonna take one by one and uh, you're gonna work one by one and you're gonna put the needle from the top to the bottom of the stitch and then open it. From the top to the bottom, open it. So from this side and always that last loop as you can see here and then take it off. So you're gonna open one by one this way so you don't miss any. So at the end I made here two and a half inches of ribbing and now um, I just folded it to, on the fold, I fold on the wrong side, okay? And then I'm going to just stitch here just like this, stitch by stitch really, all around. To make this, um, to finish just like this. And then after that, just don't close here because we are going to add that elastic in here before we, we close it off, okay?
so to start this um, last part here I just got any yarn it's a four ply yarn it's not the same yarn because I didn't have and I made a little slip stitch here and all I'm going to do is just put through the skirt here grab the yarn pull it and make a first stitch there and then I'll make one more chain just to skip I'm gonna skip here and then I'm going to make another stitch um, right here I'll be skipping actually randomly I just want I just go a bit like instead of making on the first loop I'm making on the second or third just so this is really visible like on the skirt that we have that I had and as a an inspo so it's basically that just one single crochet that's long and one chain yeah you have to skip a few rows okay so this is long enough so it's uh, you can see from a you can see it actually see the stitch okay I started on the back and this is all I'm doing I'm chain one and then skip one here two no actually skip one yeah skip one chain one skip this one And just make sure it's not tied because I know this material stretches a lot so don't make it too tight so and that's um, yeah that's what I was gonna say this avoids the curling as well okay. so this is our skirt finished looks really cool I actually really enjoy this part here so I'm gonna leave a link on the description below of a top that you can match with this skirt as well okay and I'll be making another top with this similar edging as well so if you want to match with the next one you can as you can too Again guys, thank you for watching and I see you next week.